All right, lads, welcome back to the channel. This is a video that I've been putting off for quite a while, mainly because my doctor told me to avoid unnecessary stress. Just kidding, I'm from the UK. We can't even see our doctors anymore. But anyway, as we continue in my slow mental decline playing top tier war thunder today we're going to be taking a look at one of the new generations of gaijin's top tier premiums we've already covered fantastic vehicles such as the nimble japanese type 90 fuji and we've also covered some absolute brutes such as the t80u e1 but today we're taking a look at a tank that really excels at nothing even gaijin struggled to sell this tank comically using the fact that it gets a 50 cal as one of the main marketing points I'm of course talking about the star of today's show, the Challenger 2 OES, or Operational Entry Standard. A quote-unquote upgrade that adds a minor armor package, a 50 cal, and nearly 11 tons of additional weight, all while using the same underpowered Perkins found on the Challenger 2. If you'd like the privilege of playing this absolutely downgrade of a tank, you'll have to hand over 9,620 Golden Eagles to the Snail, a cost of around $50. For that, you get a mediocre premium tank sitting at battery rating 11.3, an RP modifier of 732%, and a silver line modifier of 570%. As one of literally the only good things about the British Challengers, that is the reload, and because of this, I'd highly recommend investing in at least the expert crew, which will set you back 1,560,000 silver lions. And for all you high earners, I'd also get the ace crew for 2,200 golden eagles. As the OES is a premium, it will come equipped with all modifications, as well as 33 repairs. The tank comes as standard in a plain green camouflage with a khaki netting on top of it. You can also equip the tank with an additional woodland camouflage, two additional winter, and two additional desert camouflages. There is also one camouflage currently available on the Gaijin Marketplace. This is the Queen's Royal Hussars, and it is basically a three-tone woodland camouflage, similar to the NATO standard Kark or three-tone Kark, found in both the American and German tech trees. So boys, with the basic stats covered, let's get into some more depth, starting as always with the engine and mobility. Without its additional Dorchester armour, the original Challenger 2 weighs 64 tonnes, and combined with the engine, it has a power to weight ratio of 19 horsepower per tonne. The OES for comparison, still using the same Perkins CV12, producing 1217 horsepower, weighs in at a whopping 74.8 tonnes, giving it a power to weight ratio of 16.3 horsepower per tonne giving it a similar power to weight ratio to that of the American M60. There's no getting around it though, compared to most other tanks at this battle rating, the mobility of the Challenger 2 OES is atrocious. You have no real flexibility, you can't really change your attack plan or turn around and defend a cap. It's kind of like playing a T95 or a mouse. Once you go down a road, you're pretty much committed to that play style. The low speed maneuverability is also poor in my opinion. Trying to turn on the spot or quickly get around a corner is very sluggish. In my opinion, making this tank completely unsuitable for brawling. To be fair though, in a straight line, the tank isn't particularly slow. Being able to reach 66 km per hour, the reverse speed of 38 km per hour is also very nice, allowing you to rapidly retreat. Something which you're going to be doing quite a lot, especially as you're going to be fighting 2A7s and T80BVMs every game. But unlike a lot of the new premiums, such as the aforementioned Type 90 Fuji or the T80 UE1, the mobility of the Challenger 2 OES is certainly not an asset. We then come on to the survivability, something which us Britbongs used to boast about. The Challenger 2 is very heavy, yeah, but because it has great armour. Then the tank went to a certain European country and ended up being destroyed just as easily as pretty much every other Western MBT. I'm beginning to think that the British arms industry in the late 90s weren't actually playing 4D chess, but were actually just massively retarded. In game though, the Challenger 2 is no better. Starting with the basics, the tank has a crew of four men with a driver in the hull and a gunner, commander and loader located in the fighting compartment of the turret. Protecting the crew is a substantial amount of non-explosive reactive composite armor, effectively protecting the hull and turret fronts. 
This gives you an insane amount of protection against chemical warheads, but against the most modern Sabre rounds, notably the DM-53 fired by the Leopard 2A7, the kinetic protection is a little lacking. As you can see, at point-blank range, practically the entire frontal sector of the tank is vulnerable, with the exception of the turret cheeks. This strong turret armor, and as we'll soon cover, your powerful, accurate gun, does allow the OAS to be an absolute menace in a hold down position. Being hold down in Modern War Thunder is quite a rarity though, because most of the maps are now flat and urban, with basically no verticality. So in most cases, you aren't going to be able to hide your incredibly weak hull armor. The OES also has an additional armor plate bolted onto the lower frontal plate. This is around 30mm thick of additional NERA composite. And as you can see, this will protect you against some of the smaller caliber auto cannons. But even the 57mm gun on the 2S38 can punch straight through it. This means that even the thickest parts of your frontal hull and turret armor can be easily negated if an enemy knows where to shoot you. So again, try to minimize exposing your weak hull. The side of both the hull and the turret is also fitted with explosive reactive armor, giving you 30mm of protection against kinetic energy projectiles and 400mm of protection against chemical warheads. While this may save you from a flanking IFV or a helicopter launched ATGM, in most engagements it would be better to not have this additional ERA and I wish there was a tick box in the modifications which allows you to remove it as this would free up basically that 10 additional tons of weight compared to the original Challenger 2. As I hope I've made clear in the video so far, the main issue with this tank is it's just so heavy. Like, it just robs you of so much actual potential on the battlefield. Carrying on though, the OES also has a spall line located inside the turret, giving you additional protection from fragmentation. But the crew compartment is so small that any penetrating round is likely to knock out all the crew members, or at least a vital part of the gun. And finally, the British ammunition is two-piece, with the inert sabre rounds being located inside the turret. However, the explosive bagged charges are located in the hull, which can lead to an instant kill if an enemy round penetrates your lower hull section. And considering I've just been spurging out about how shit the hull armor and the mobility is, your crew members being turned into a fine red paste is going to be a very common occurrence. Moving on to the cannon, which is another source of British cope, as it's the only NATO MBT that still uses a rifled main gun. This is of course a 120mm L30A1. We can carry 49 rounds of ammunition in total, but as with pretty much all MBTs in War Thunder, I'd recommend only taking between 15 and 20 rounds. The gun has 10 degrees of depression and 20 degrees of elevation. The optics of the tank are pretty good, coming equipped with second generation thermal images for both the gunner and strangely the 50 cal gunner sight, with the commander's optic not getting any sort of thermal imager, but still does have a night vision system. With a stock crew, the gun will reload every 6.5 seconds, which still does make it reload faster than pretty much every Soviet main battle tank, even with a stock crew. But if you do get yourself an ace crew, that time will decrease to 5 seconds, giving the OES a very competitive rate of fire. But what exactly are we firing? Well, your main round is almost certainly going to be the L27A1. It travels at over 1,600 meters per second, making it pretty easy to aim at long range. Against most opponents, its 326 millimeters of penetration against armor angled at 60 degrees is more than enough, but it is noticeably lacking around 50 millimeters of penetration compared to the DM53. In fact, the L27A1 is by far the worst top tier round Sabo, at least in terms of penetration statistics statistics, with every other nation's top tier vehicle having both more flat and more angled penetration. While this reduced level of penetration is a sting to British national pride, the L27A1 in my opinion is far from useless. I found that I can easily knock out every MBT that I've come across. As you've probably seen in the video, I've pretty much killed every single nation's top tier tank. It's it's not a let that while the shell isn't as powerful as other rounds, the L27A1 is still more than useful, especially if you play this tank in a static pull down position. Around that guardian is pretty much took out to the backyard and shot in the back of the head is the Hesh round. This is the L31A7. It's been pretty much nerfed into the ground. While it does have more explosive 
refill than the infamous Soviet 30F26 HE shell. It's nowhere near as useful in my opinion. I won't lie though, I do I, I do still take three or four Hess shells into a battle, mainly for dealing with panciers and most open topped and likely armoured vehicles. But against the absolute majority of the main battle tanks you will face, the Hess shell is largely useless. And that wraps everything for the firepower of the OES. It's got a fantastic gun with a decent round. The thermals are great. You've got good zoom. It's just let down once again by the poor survivability and majorly let down by the terrible mobility. All right, let's wrap this up. As I've already said, the challenges are pretty much outgunned, outmaneuvered, and most other main battle tanks, with the exception of the Macavas, have basically the same level of armor protection, but basically better mobility and better firepower. The OES has no real standout factor that, in my opinion, justifies playing it, let alone purchasing it. The Type 90 Fuji has a fantastic gun, high speed, and a four second reload. The T80 UE1 has speed, a great gun as well as upgraded second gen thermals. The OES has nothing going for it, it's the heaviest challenger to in game, and along with the TES is by far the worst performing challenger. With the tank only really being viable in a hull down position, where your weak hull is hidden and enemies are forced to approach you, giving you the first chance to shoot and basically all of the advantages. But basically any vehicle is good in those situations. There's nothing about the Challenger 2 OES which allows you to do something on the battlefield. It, it's also not really that fun to play in my opinion. It's literally the worst of the Challenger 2s you could have picked to make a premium. I'd have rather just have preferred the standard Challenger 2. Just have a slightly lighter tank with a bit more mobility and because of that i would highly recommend people not to purchase the oes instead if you're interested in picking up a grinder for the british tech tree i can highly recommend the challenger ds a battle rating 10.3 main battle tank with a fantastic main gun ammunition and most importantly a very effective grinding lineup Anyway, lads, if you found this video informative, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to support me in other ways, consider becoming a member. Just like my main boys, Lola Alphonse, Tans, Doboa LX, Dr. Bob, Thomas013, Shlunty, Van Hela, Diogenes, Econ, and Tajira Warfunder. As always, lads, thank you for supporting the channel. And most importantly, boys, thank you very much for watching to the end. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, leave a comment saying, Put the kettle on.